Okay, hi and welcome. I will uh, present a little implementation of um, polynomial types in the dependently typed language Agata. It's uh, inspired by the first week of the domain specific languages of mathematics course, but it's uh, extra material not included in the course because we use Haskell and not Agata. But this is a, a cute example that I would like to show anyway for those who are especially interested. So as we can see, I've started a file called type DSL, an Agda module. I import uh, just one module, the natural numbers, the data type for natural numbers, addition and multiplication. And then I defined a little syntactic uh, data type for constructors for zero, one, addition, and multiplication. And my intent here is to define three different semantics or translations of this syntax tree. And the first, which I will call card for cardinality, just computes the natural number that the expression would naturally denote. So one, add addition of one, and the multiplication of one and zero and so on. Uh, card for cardinality, because this will also be the number of elements in the types, which I will define as a second semantics. So the type set in Agda is the type um, of types. <laughs> so I will uh, return different types depending on the value here. So I will uh, construct a recursive function to compute the type. Uh, and the number of elements in those types would correspond to the cardinality function here. And the way of showing that is the third semantics, where I want to implement a recursive function enumerate, which given a syntactic description of a type produces a vector of values of the translation of that syntax to actual types and with length, the cardinality with the intention of there being all the values enumerated from that type. Okay, let's get to it. So first, um, to get a little bit help in the naming uh, later, I will start by adding names to the, con the typical variables of these arguments, so that when I do some of the commands in Emacs for the Agda mode to do case matching, it will use X and Y as these names. Uh, I've loaded the file as still type checks, and you can see down here that there are three question marks, a natural number, a type, and a vector. Uh, and then just to have something to work with, I will define two as an expression being equal to add one, one, and four as another expression being a equal to mul to two. Those I can use for some test cases further down. So first uh, semantics, cardinality. So I'm using E as the argument here. And if I ask uh, Agda to case on E, it will split up into these four cases, add question marks or holes, meta variables on the right hand side. And I will not spend much time here. Uh, this should be zero, this should be one, this should be the value. Uh, so the cardinality of E. Hmm, I thought I would get X and Y here. Uh, let's rename them. Uh, the cardinality of x plus the cardinality of y uh, and here something very similar oops ah. okay copying is not always as easy as i wanted okay so the cardinality multiplied by the cardinality so a recursive cause Nothing strange here. If I ask Agda to normalize the expression card of two, I get two. And if I ask it to normalize the expression card of four, I get four, as expected. Okay, 
time then for the second semantics. Here I call the variable t uh, because I want to uh, sort of hint at that this is now a syntax tree that uh, represents a type. Uh, so I will do a case over this t. And here in the different um, meta variables, I want them to fill them in with actual types. So this should be a zero element type, a one element type, and so on. Let's fix this directly. OK, so a zero element type, I could import it, but let's define it instead. So I define a data type I call empty, and it doesn't have any constructors. So now I have empty, and I can supply it as this first case. That type checks nicely. OK, here I need a one element type. Let's call it unit and define it as unit type set where unit has type unit. So lowercase unit has type uppercase unit. So it's a data type with exactly one value. And here in the recursive function, I return the type, not the value. I return the type. OK, and here I want to combine two types. I want to type, um, I want to do something with the call of tip to x and tip to y. And uh, what I want to do with it, well, I want to define a sum type. And um, inspired by Haskell, I will call it either. So given a type A and a type B, I should get a type. And I call, as in Haskell, the constructors left and right. OK, now I can use this type constructor here and construct then the either type. So the disjoint union type. OK, and finally, I need a product type here. And uh, well, this is, uh, has a special syntax in Haskell. So I'll, I'll uh, define it here and call it symmetrically with either. I'll call it both. So both A of type set and B of type set, where, and then it's just one constructor, which I use the infix comma for. It takes an A and a B and produces both an A and a B. So the data type is just a data type of pairs here. Or, which means that here I can say it's both tip x, whoops, tip x. The word type is um, too much overloaded. Um, so this is just recursive call to tip x tip y and this then is the Cartesian product type equals the pair type. This could also be called the sum type. Yep. Okay. So now I've defined two different semantics, one translating to a natural number and one translating to a type. And if I want to evaluate these, uh, as I did, I can see what is the value of tip of two. And that's either unit unit, as expected. The X and Y are one and translated to unit, and it's neither type. And uh, it also means that if I want to define some value, for example, a name for this type could be bool. I haven't imported bool, so I'm free to define it. Let's call that the tip of two. So it's a two element type uh, and it's a set. Um, and then if we have bool, I guess I should define also false of type bool. And uh, false could then be left unit. And this is type correct and then true type bool could be defined to be 
equal to right unit. Um, and then to use the four. So if I check here, the expression tip of four is, well, it's both either unit units and either unit unit, but let's um, um, give that a name. Um, so both bool bool. Um, so that's then the type of a four. And then as an example, let's say, uh, well, example one of type, both bool bool. It could be, uh, say, false, true. I mean, any pair of two booleans would do. So as you can see, I've computed uh, both bool bool as a type from the from this. So if I should be complete here, I can give the type signature as well. This is a type. Okay, so now I define the first semantics with some examples, the second semantics with some examples, and let's now go to the third semantics, enumerate. So I will start the same way as before by splitting this case. And um, then I will have to start filling in the different cases. So the zero case, that should be a vector of type, <laughs> well, all the values in the vector should be of type empty, of which there are none, but the cardinality, the length of the vector is also zero. So I can produce a zero length vector of elements, well, of no elements. Um, here in the one case, I need to produce a one element vector with something in it. And what's the type of that something? Well, it says, uh, says down here is of tip one, which is unit. So the only value of type capital unit is lowercase unit. So that's fine. And here then I need to have some helper function. And uh, I will call this helper function add uh, enum add. And then I will recursively call, oops, enumerate on X and enumerate on Y. And I will do something very similar down here, enum mul. Um, I can't load this one yet because I haven't defined these two. So let's uh, at least give them type signatures here. Uh, so enum add, well, enumerate will return a vector. So enum add will have to take two vectors and try. let's try to be as general as possible here. So it takes a vector of type of values of type A of length M and then a vector of type B of, uh, of length N. And then as it has to, um, let's try to split here and look at the left hand side, the right hand side. It has to supply, uh, supply a list of the sum of the lengths. So it has to produce uh, a vector of some type of M plus N as the length here. Otherwise the type will not work out with the cardinality of the sum type here. And what is the type? Well, that's also is the sum type. So it's the either A, B type that we need. Okay, now if I try to load it, it complains that A and M and B and N are not defined. And I can solve this in different ways. I will use the variable construct, which just gives hints to Agda saying that A and B are sets and M and N are natural numbers. So what that means is that when it, uh, finds these in a type signature and they are not bound, they will be added in this invisible space between the colon and vec here as hidden arguments. Okay, we need a similar type for an mul. So I should also, I guess, give, uh, to make it not complain, give a uh, definition 
down here and also for enum mul equals question mark. Now enum mul has the wrong type. So it also needs two vectors in our, as arguments, just as enum add, but now it has to use multiplication and it has to use the both type. So I'm quite constrained here by the type um, that of the cases in the enum uh, mul and add are used for. So with these rather general types, I will actually not have many choices in the implementation. So that is quite helpful. So if I add a list of, or a vector of A's and a vector of B's, well, actually in both cases, then we can start to see what do I need to do here? Well, we have to produce a vector with the sum of the lengths, M first and then N. So it's something like AS plus plus BS. But AS plus plus BS does not have the right type. So I cannot uh, append these two lists because one or vectors, one is a vector of type A and one is the vector of type B. And also the result needs to be of either type. So I need to convert AS. And I've imported here the data type of vectors. So I got, among other things, a map function for vectors. So let's be concrete here and say v.map. So I need to map a function over AS and a map a function over BS. And what are these functions? Well, to make the types work out, there is only one choice. If we look over here, we got left that takes A into either AB and right, which takes B into either AB. So this will have to be left and this will have to be right. Okay, let's see. Uh, it type checks and it, we've already checked that it would type check. If this would type check, then the final definition would type check. So it looks promising. Um, in a mull now, that's a little more complicated. So here we need to get a vector which is m times n elements long. So we've got two vectors as um, base values here, and we need to sort of multiply them together. And um, I will do this in two stages. So I will start with using concat. Um, so concatenation of a vector of vectors. And if I do that, that means if you look down here that I need a vector of vector of pairs of A and B. And I have um, to, to produce this I'll, of the suitable length, uh, I will use map. So I will use v dot map of some function onto the AS vector. So if you check here what I've got left, it says, well, down here at the bottom, it says that now I need a function from A, from something of type A to a vector of both A, B, and N. So let's um, write a function from A. And then, well, we need a vector of length N. So we need the multiplication in the end result here. And we, it is um, hints at that we should do some copying. So we will actually now for each value A of an element in the list AS, we will pair it up with all the element in BS. So that means that we can construct this inner vector by mapping some function over BS. Okay, some function I said, well, what type does that func some function have? It says down here, it takes a B and then gives a pair. So if I want to write it out explicitly, I can make a lambda uh, expression here. So now we just have to produce a pair. And we have to make a pair of an A and a B, and we got an A and a B in scope. So let's just write A comma B. So what do we have now? We, we have sort of two loops. We, we loop over both the outer and the inner vector, and we uh, pair up the, the values everywhere. So every A 
will be paired up with every B in all combinations. And that's why we will get M times N values. And the fact that this type checks now and that the whole program type checks hints at that we've actually solved the third semantics problem here. So can we now evaluate this? So let's say test two, uh, that should be a vector of um, the type of two and the cardinality of two, well, which is the same as the vector of bool and two. So a two element long vector of booleans. Um, let's see, it should be equal to enumerate two. Okay, it type checks. Let's see what the normalizer says, test two. Okay, so it normalizes to, to this value. And if we remember our definitions up here of false as the left unit and true as the right unit, this is just the list false followed by true followed by the empty list. So the two element list false true. Nice, uh, we should also do test four. Uh, so that should be a vec tip four card four or equivalently, let's see what we called it up here. Uh, whoops, sorry, I'm in the wrong window. We call the type both bool bool. Um, so it's a vector of both bool bool of length four. Well, yes, it's not defined, so let's define it. Um, it should be just enumerate four. So remember again, what is four? Well, four is just mul two two. And apparently it's supposed to create a vector of length four of pairs of two booleans. And now we can evaluate this, the test four, and we can copy it into a multi-line comment just to see what we've got. So what are these values? Well, we can recognize them if we do this substitution of uh, left unit to false and right unit to true. It's false, 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 true, true, false, and true, true. It's a complete enumeration of all the values of the data type of bool cross bool. So the Cartesian product of two booleans. Okay, uh, so what have we done in total? We've done a first semantics, just computing a natural number value of the syntax data type. A second semantics, computing the corresponding finite type. So returning an empty unit, either type or pair type. And then finally, um, the third semantics, an enumeration function, which has a dependent type. So given a syntax tree T, it creates a vector of the types that its syntax tree represent. And with the cardinality, so the length of the vector is the number of elements of that type. And then the different cases recursively fill in all of these values. So that's uh, all that were I've prepared here. An inter interesting exercise could be add a constructor, whoops, constructor for function types. So function types would be some constructor up here, which would be the power um, when it comes to numerics. So repeated multiplication instead of repeated addition as multiplication is. And uh, then I would expect that uh, to be, well, either functions or tables coming out. And then enumerating all of those should also be possible. Okay, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this was an exercise in uh, Agda for uh, showing that there is a very close similarity between the algebra of simple arithmetic expressions and the algebra of data types for empty one element type, empty type, single type, uh, either type and pair type. 
And that's all for now.